I am going to be talking about how fathers are failing uh, their daughters. This is uh, an opinion that has been um, put together from a number of anecdotal experiences but also by making observations across society, um, across different cultures, ethnicities, um, across different continents, countries, and demographics. And in many ways, this is not a criticism to its fathers. Instead, it's I guess it's a call to action. It's a call to action so daughters can understand perhaps how to guide and support their fathers um, in whatever form or fashion they can. Uh, but more importantly, it's also a call to action to fathers and would be fathers. Let me begin by a definition that I think will serve as a useful foundation to uh, this conversation. The word father is one that we are all familiar with. It's one that we've used in different ways, um, whether that be in a family, whether that be in how we express uh, our connection to the transcendental um, through a religion or through meditation or through uh, some form of spiritual practice. The word father is not a name. The word father is a function. It defines a position, a position of leadership or uh, a position of authority. The word father has different meanings, but in, in many ways, the function defines the purpose and also defines the true meaning. When we use the word father, Society generally tends to refer to a man who is responsible biologically or through the adoption process for an offspring. And therefore, in many ways, we, we see fathers as anyone who has created an extension of his genes or his genealogy or anyone who has decided to bring in someone from the outside through the process of adoption into and under their protection and their authority. Fatherhood simply means, or fathers, refers to anything that is responsible for um, the production, and perhaps the best way to describe this would be by using nature. Um, we have what we call the soil, the seed, the seasons, um, the source. Father will be what you call the source, the form through which everything is created or comes from but in the same way the father would also be the one who plants the seed the father also is the one who creates the soil the father is the one who nurtures protects loves 
creates, builds. Um, and that's, that's the function of a father. Now, with that definition, I guess you can see that you do not have to be biologically connected to someone to be the person's father. You can become a father by disposition and by choice. And sometimes just in the same way that no one is born a leader. Some of us have leadership thrust on us. Some of us choose the responsibilities of leadership but we all make a choice. And so, um, with the definition of fatherhood or fathers, let me move very quickly to how I think fathers are failing their daughters. Um, the first thing I have in, in mind is absence. Fathers fail their daughters by their absence. Now, I understand that in several scenarios, sometimes the man, in this case, has not given his consent to become a father and is unaware that he has a daughter. Perhaps he becomes aware of that much, much later down the line. In this case, what you might have is um, the creation of a of an offspring by a single mother without um, a husband and perhaps sometimes without the consent um, of the man. Uh, there are occasions whereby the woman is neglected and she has no choice but to raise the child or the kids without a man. And so by absence, I am not making a value judgment. I am simply saying that one way through which fathers fail their daughters is by their absence. Absence by choice, absence by death, absence by circumstances, and absence um, by a delegation of responsibility. That is the first, absence. The second is negligence. Negligence is in many ways a difficult one because someone has to be passing judgment. However, um, there are some simple ways um, through which we as a society can observe um, negligence in action. Um, it's not unusual to find that sometimes fathers have a closer bond with their sons. And it's also not unusual to find that sometimes if a man really wants a son, but has daughters that he could unknowingly deprive um, his daughters of the love that should be given freely. In many ways, um, he makes his daughters earn his love rather than give his love freely. Sometimes it's done unconsciously and sometimes it's done um, from a place of regret and pain. So negligence is another way um, through which fathers fail their daughters. Um, by failing to communicate, to converse with the daughters, um, 
by failing to express their emotions, by failing to be there for their daughters, they neglect their daughters. And that creates a void, um, a feeling of not being good enough, a feeling that the daughters have done something wrong. Um, I share this from a position of someone who has um, had the opportunity to have lived um, long enough to have observed um, women at different age groups from babies all the way up to women in their 50s. And I can say this with conviction. I can say that for those who have uh, the patience and who are intuitive, it is very, very easy to observe a woman who was neglected by her father. In many ways, there is always this striving to please. Uh, there is always this striving for validation, for affirmation, um, for recognition, for applause. Women who are teenagers and women between the age of 18 and about 40 are usually the most um, vulnerable, um, primarily because... Um, at that age group, um, we are already at a time, at our formative process, where it's very difficult to um, to rewrite the script um, or the image that has already been formed on your behalf uh, by people who were supposed to be protective of you, um, but weren't. For whatever reason. Most young girls, especially young girls between the age of 18 and 35, exhibit, in my experience, uh, a majority of them exhibit this um, this characteristic of wanting to be heard, wanting to be loved, wanting to be appreciated, wanting to be celebrated, um, wanting to be lauded, praised, and loved. Now, we all want all of that as human beings. However, there is a difference between when there is a desire for recognition and that desire is coming from a pure place in comparison to when there is a desire for recognition but it's coming from a place that speaks deep down into the person's subconscious and that desire could be because that gift, words of appreciation, affirmation were never given and for most women in my experience they have seldom heard the affirmation and praise of a man until they start to become sexually active. In many forms and in many ways, fathers neglect their daughters by refusing to say, I love you. But it's easy to say, I love you. Fathers fail their daughters by not saying, I am proud of you. Fathers fail their daughters specifically, and this is perhaps the most important part of the issue of negligence. Fathers fail their daughters by the lack of specificity of what makes their daughters special. Now, let me give you an example of what this means. Uh, and I'll use a relational context 
It's not unusual to see two lovers um, in a conversation and one says to the other, I love you. But they cannot really explain what it is about the other that they love. So for example, um, let me pretend that I am speaking to my daughter. I can say, I love you. And those words mean a lot. But also, I can also say, I love you. And I love you for the following reasons. I like the texture of your hair. I love the sound of your voice. I love to see me in you. I see my reflection in you. I love the lady that I know you would become. I'm proud of the fact that you make good decisions. I know that I can depend on you. I know that you always make me proud. I love the fact that you care about people. In the game you played yesterday, I loved how you walked up to your opponent and congratulated them and smiled. I love the way you smile, especially the way your mouth moves when you smile and you show your teeth. Now, all of these are examples of how you can extend the statement of love in someone so that the person recognizes what makes them unique from the other. If a father says to his son, I love you, and says to his daughter, I love you, he has to qualify his love. As a matter of fact, men receive love very differently to women. Um, a father can express his love for his daughter by explaining how he feels about his daughter. I love you because when I look at you, I see greatness in you. I see a woman who has the potentiality to achieve anything she wants. I love you because I feel in my heart that you're destined for something special. The point I'm making is fathers fail their daughters by their lack of specificity in expressing their affections. By neglecting their daughters or by trying to make their daughters earn the father's love, they fail their daughters. Um, the third is poor leadership. In many ways, a father's responsibility can be summarized in two words, available and capable. The, the role of a father is not to be the perfect role model that a daughter can emulate. The role of a father is to be vulnerable, yet available, but capable. Um, unlike boys, um, a boy can disappoint his father and still receive forgiveness from his father, even without asking for forgiveness. My experience has been that there are times when the daughter has to work hard, and in most cases harder than a son would, for the father's forgiveness. Um, unfortunately, men, we do not understand what it feels like to be a woman. And so when a woman goes through 
uh, puberty and goes through her developmental stages, uh, there is always the tendency that along the journey, um, her behavior may not be understood by her father. And that could cause some form of frustration, confusion, and could lead to the withdrawal of leadership by the father. A father has to lead. In many ways, the frustration fathers have is they do not want to lead and have no one following. There is a saying that anyone who believes that he or she is leading but has no one following them is going for a walk. And fathers find it easier to get their sons to follow than they do their daughters. Nonetheless, leadership requires that the person leading um, first of all believes in the vision, secondly shares the vision, explains the purpose for that vision and shares the strategy for the achievement of the vision. And in many ways, one of the ways that fathers fail their daughters is through poor leadership. Um, the way men should lead men, and by men I mean sons, the way men should lead their sons is not the same as the way men should lead their daughters. The vision should be consistent. The delivery of the vision should be different. The implementation of the vision should be adapted. Um, the expectations that a father has for a son and for a daughter should not be identical. A father has always always has to come to leadership to to the leadership um, position in good faith. And number four, uh, I think is uh, quite telling, is the refusal to adapt um, to the times. Refusal to adapt uh, to the times. It's not unusual to find a father's get very disappointed with their daughters um, because their daughters are not following their instructions. And there are times when daughters feel that their father's instructions are very old fashioned. And so fathers get frustrated because what they want is obedience. And they want their instructions to be followed. And this leads to a failure in the relationship because for someone who has had no lived experience, in this case I'm referring to a young uh, daughter, it's very difficult to expect of the daughter to behave in a manner congruent with the way of life that predates her experience. It is much easier for someone who has lived to adapt to a change in cultural values, mores, um, and the times that we find ourselves. So it's not unusual to find that in many cases, the relationship between fathers and daughters become strained because the fathers refuse to adapt to the times. Um, we live in an, a generation where now we have the internet, we have social media. Um, and so 
there is a whole new world that exists. The world is changing so fast. Um, and one thing we know is that people do not resist change. They resist being changed. And so most of the time, fathers feel that they are forcefully being changed or being forced to change. And that creates a resistance. Um, that resistance leads to um, some form of disharmony and leads to a confused state between daughters and fathers. And I think one of the best ways that fathers could um, develop better relationships with their daughters is to welcome change, is to be open to change without neglecting or diluting what they believe are the value systems that they want to instill in their daughters. Um, but to empathize. And one of one of the greatest stories I ever um, came across is uh, the story of Jesus, where I believe it's John um, 3, 16. And it says, and Jesus wept. Now I, I find out, find that story to be um, uh, fascinating, not because there's not anything profound, um, Uh, not because there's anything profound per se um, in, in those words, no, but more so because um, I may have confused it. I believe John 3, 16 is, is something different. It probably has more to do with um, the, the love that God had for the world that he gave. Um, the one thing he cared about the most. Um, I, I can't remember the the part of the Bible where it talks about Jesus weeping. Um, the reason I am struck by that text um, it, is because what he expresses is the ability to empathize with the people around you. Um, is I believe it teased the. Uh, Jesus wept is the shortest um, verse in the Bible. The meaning uh, has more to do with empathy. Uh, the reaction that he had observed by witnessing the pain that other people felt for someone who they had lost. And the expression of his emotions in a way that connected to their emotions is the part of the story that I believe is the most powerful part that I can, I don't have to know you to empathize with you. All I have to do is be willing to put myself in your shoes, to be able to connect with you, to see through your eyes and to feel what you may be feeling. So in the same way, I think fathers can um, provide better relationships with their daughters if they took some time uh, to, to put themselves in their daughter's shoes, even when the daughters are wrong. Um, there is a saying, in order to be interesting, you have to be interested. Number five is where I think I'm going to stop today. Um, or perhaps I might do one more, but uh, number five is the failure to play with their daughters. Um, the failure to play, the failure to laugh, the failure to um, be vulnerable, the failure to connect. Now, life is hard. Fathers, we take ourselves too seriously. Um, one of our roles is protection and provision. 
And for that reason, sometimes we we take ourselves too seriously. Um, a, a, a woman's expression and a woman's experience of a man is filtered through the lens of the relationship she had with the father or with the other men for whom she looked up to. A man that can play with his daughter is a powerful man. But most importantly, he creates an image in the daughter about how she can be herself, how she can laugh, how she can be vulnerable. Um, and so my recommendation to fathers would be, um, you need to learn to laugh. You need to learn to have fun with your daughters, just as you do with your sons. You need to learn how to play with them, wrestle, tell jokes, um, allow yourself to be silly um, in front of your daughters. You need to learn how to make yourself, allow yourself to show vulnerability in front of your daughters. Um, most, in my experience, and this is an observation that I have made um, over many years, most women only come to the realization of how men are when they become adults. And as a matter of fact, foreplay is the first play that most women have with men. And the result of that is that most women do not understand how men think, feel, when we're play, when we're playful, um, they don't understand how how we are um, from a mental point of view. Foreplay should not be the first play that a woman experiences with a man. In many ways, women who have the rare opportunity to play with their fathers. Um, joke with their fathers, wrestle, um, do sports with their fathers, watch movies and laugh and even watch their fathers cry. It creates an image um, in their daughter's subconscious that is lasting, uh, that lasts for a lifetime. As a matter of fact, um, a woman who has a good relationship with her father, who laughs and plays with her father, has a higher likelihood of being in a happier relationship as a wife. Because um, she would have seen an image modelled to her at an early age she would have had the experience of knowing how to use her soft, soft power. She would have had the opportunity to see the man that she loved first, which is her father, express all the things and provide examples of how other men should behave and how she should be treated. Um, but also, she would have seen by the play, by laughter, by vulnerability, she would have seen the men are just men. Um, we're not saints. We're not perfect. We have, we experience pain. We experience joy. Uh, and therefore, uh, the mysticism that most women have for men or the, the frustration that most women have towards men um, could be rectified at a very early age. Now let me finish with number six. And I will not go into number six in detail because I believe that that is a session in, in itself. Fathers fail their daughters. Number six. In not guiding them through the big decisions that they make. 
and they will make in life or not providing a blueprint on how to make those decisions. Now, there are three decisions that I have in mind. The first is the most important, and that is choosing a mate, choosing a life partner. The second is education and career path. And the third is making that decision on what to invest your money in. Now, those three are entirely, um, um, those three are so, so, so important that I think they deserve a session um, on their own. Now, with that, I'm going to stop today's session and I hope it's been useful.